Hi friends and family. How have you been? I hope you have been doing well. Going on with life as usual. And thanking God. I thank God for you. And even for me. That at such a time we are alive. And sound and kicking. And enjoying life. Because that's all we are about in this world. As we make a difference here and there, we make life merry. Well, let me start by reminding you to subscribe, to comment, and to like the video. Well, those who are new, I request you to subscribe. Those who are family, thank you very much. I appreciate. And let me say it has been a long week for us in Texas, in Dallas, Texas. And it has been a week which, uh, which really has touched us in a, very, in a very negative way, but it is life. We have um, lost one of us, and when I say one of us, I mean as the Kenyan community. And that has been, uh, has been a very difficult week for us. When you imagine you are away from home, we are very far from Kenya living. And then we are a family as Kenyans and as Africans, really migrants, we are a family. And so when we lose one of us, we feel nostalgic about hope we feel bad we feel something you know like ah. you start now thinking what if we were home could this be happening but death is there even home even here so it has been that long week of, of uh, mourning we are still mourning because we are not done we, we, we are not done we are still mourning and well, those who are in Christ, we don't moon like the world moons. That's that's our hope. And therefore, that has been our week here. It has not been a very happy week. And even if it's summer, we have not been done doing it. was not a week of barbecuing and all this and weekend of, oh, let's go do this. No, mm. we are just there. It has been a week of visiting with our friends and uh, mourning with them and uh, telling them a word of encouragement. So that's where we are. And because of that, I felt that I should talk about uh, loss and grieving and how we can help our loved ones to even ourselves to heal when loss occurs. First, number one, we must know that grief is a normal thing in life. Grieving over a loss is normal. So when we lose something, may it be property, you lose your house, you lose your car, you lose whatever you value very much. If you lose that, you grieve. You mourn over it. The other day I was looking at the news, uh, East African news, and I saw Kenya uh, demolitions in Kaawa West of the market, of the kiosk. For the for the traders, those who lost those kiosks, they grieved, they mourned over them because they make life out of that. So that is part. That's something which can make one grieve. It's loss. You may lose a part of your body. You grieve over it because if you hand a hand and then it is taken away, you have to to grieve because now you are you are getting into another type of life without one part of you if you lose functionality of any part of your body 
if it's not it stops functioning you can grieve over that any type of a loss even if you lose a job you go to work and then you're given termination letter you will take time to grieve over that if a career crumbles you still grieve over that and the most common still if a relationship breaks may it be friendship of any type if if you really valued that relationship and then it just breaks something comes in between and you are no more friends you grieve over that divorce and separation when families break there is grief because that is loss of a unit which you had built but the very most the very most which we know that we mourn for and which everybody is aware of and wants to run to help is in death when death occurs we all run to help the the, the 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 people who have been left behind but how do we help how how, how do we la, uh, uh, how do we really know or learn or how do we really we just presence and that's all we really do not know and it's something we cannot really tell or even master it's only god who can help us to help us to know how to help a, a person who is undergoing loss there's one thing i know that whatever loss anybody might have nobody has never lost anything in life even kids a loss of a pain in class is loss and so the the way we deal with loss is different because we have different personalities and also it also depends with what has been lost but every loss makes us lose some sense of ourselves we are looking at the answers when you're looking at the answers as to why this and that has happened you are not yourself you don't know yourself you don't have the answer so you're lost too you get lost in between two as the person and therefore we feel some degree of grief and grief uh, grief is is a stage all over in life which nobody nobody should not nobody should not grieve nobody should stop anybody to grieve because it's a stage which just occurs you've lost so what next who will answer all those questions you don't have the the answers that is why you have lost sense of yourself you've lost sense of where to turn to what next then especially when you lose something somebody you know something very important some part of your body somebody sincerely this can be traumatic and i want to say death loss can be traumatic especially if it is through death there is no death which is easy loss of a property can cause grief but you can still come out of that easier than when you lose a loved one that's why now we we grade the losses we grade even the grieving the grief and the time one grieves they are different even in death death is traumatic yes but there are some people who can die in your life and you grieve differently and even for a shorter time and you don't feel traumatic 
let me take an example of my grandma for example my grandma who is 120 years or 101 or seven years she if she goes to be with the lord that will not be traumatic uh -uh. not uh, not the way one would lose a child who is less than 20 years or even even 20 or 30 40 50 a young person whom we see that this person is in his prime that death it knocks differently it knocks on our hands and in our hearts differently because there, there is a stage of life where you live with a person and when they rest you say it is well the other times we say it is well not that it is well with us completely is because we have christ even if we start singing it is well it is well for sure in the heart of the person who has passed through loss it is not well that we are only calling God because the Bible says even in suffering, even if we don't feel it, he is still with us. So we have to tell him it is well so that through the Holy Spirit, he can comfort us. He comforts us through the Holy Spirit. And most of the times, what, what we see in life is that when something uh, like that occurs, when death, death knocks, we are quick to say sorry, which is a good thing. It is well, which is a good thing. God is with you, which is a good thing. We are quick to tell a person, it, you, you will make it, which is a good thing. It's comforting words. But let me tell you, in the real sense, those ones don't enter anywhere. Not at that particular time. When the person who is affected has lost the sense of themselves, even if you start talking what? Nobody can hear. We have to allow them to grieve. And this I'm talking with experience. I have passed through loss, through death. And I know even if you tell a person poorly a thousand times, you will, it's good to tell them. I'm not saying we don't tell. It's good to tell them, sorry. Because after some time is when you realize, yeah, so and so loved me. They said, they mourned with me. They came, they, they were with me. Wow, so I have a person, I have a friend in so and so. It is good. But what I'm saying is, it is not as easy uh, done as we say it. Most of the time we have told them there are three stages of, gr uh, of grieving. You must uh, accept, you must uh, uh, adjust, and you must advance. It is not on that particular day, not on that week, not on that month, not even on that year. It can take years before one moves from one stage to another after loss but our interest should be making this person heal so that we don't also lose this person because we can easily lose a person through mourning if we are not careful to be with them and to help them let me start by saying that one thing we should know is death is part of life let me deal with death because other losses we can easily come out of although still we need people to be with us to help us grieve even when we lose um, property and we lose and when we divorce and all that and uh, all these things happening the bad things happening in life you need a person but i want to let you know that the way you deal with that is very different with when we lose death or when we lose through death is very different but death is part of life i know i know when we talk of death as part of life nobody wants to imagine death can knock at their door and it doesn't even wait to be to be opened for that spirit just enters and drops so nobody would like to imagine it will rob me somebody. It will rob me somebody. We don't want to imagine that. But that is part of life. Death is part of life. And remember, even if death occurs in your family ten times in your family, you can never get used to death. That is how evil death is. How painful death is. Even if it is 
happens a thousand times, ten times, twenty times in your family or within your circles, it will never, you'll never get used to it and say, now nah, I'm used, let it come, die, I'm used. Mm -mm. Every time it knocks, you have to undergo a traumatic situation, stress, grief. That is why when people say experience is the best teacher, it can never be the best teacher when it comes to death. Mm -mm. Experience can never be the best teacher in death. It can be the best teacher in other things. We do not want to experience death so that we learn. Mm -mm. We don't learn in death. We lose. We, it causes sadness. It causes our hearts to bleed. And different people bleed differently. Different people mourn differently. That is why grieving must be allowed. We must be allowed to grieve when loss occurs. People grieve differently. Because we have different personalities and the strength we also have and whatever is surrounding us, those who are near us, who are helping us, also can make the journey easy or difficult. What we need to do during grieving period, because it has to be there, as we are not affected directly, our work should be encouragement. Encouragement. And those who are born again or those who are believers in Christ, you know us, we encourage through the word of God. Because you can never mention God and Christ and things remain the same. Our bodies can be weak, but when our spirits are strengthened by the word of God and the hope in Christ, surely the Holy Spirit cannot let us down. He has never done and you never do. He will still hold us strong. Let me tell you, when Jesus was called because his friend Lazarus had died, what did Jesus do? We are told that is the only, the shortest verse in the Bible, which says Jesus wept. There's something I want you to know. Jesus was cursing to John the Baptist, but we are not told that Jesus wept when John the Baptist is cursing, was beheaded. I know he might have mourned him, yes, but we are not told that he wept. But look at him coming to Lazarus' house and weeping. When Jesus was weeping, he was 100% man. He was 100% man. Because remember, Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. So when we wept for Lazarus, he was 100% man. That tells you, man, 100%, like we are, we have to weep. We have to weep. It is not a weakness. It is not a weakness. Cry. Weep, grief. It is not a weakness. That we have a hope in Christ. That he will wipe away our tears in one way or the other. Grieving takes time and energy. It is not an easy thing. Because when you start grieving, you don't know. You don't know. When you start asking yourself, why did it happen? Why? Why? It, you don't know up to when this will end. Because the person is not coming back. Imagine. That is the painful part of death. Even if we try to ask ourselves so many questions. Even if we try to hate or feel bad and try to knock things and all that. Which is a normal way of trying to remove anger, the, the whatever, the emotions, the person will not come back. That is why I'm death. Hmm, oh death, where is your sting? It's a bad thing. But you know what? God helps us to live. That is why I don't live behind that. It is only in God. Because these are situations which 
beyond man, situations beyond man, you leave them to God. And then us, after we have left them to God, we have to walk a walk of grief until we come to healing. The, the way people say accept and just, it, it, not even people, it's, it's psychologically, you know, professional psychologists, they say accept, adjust, and fans. I agree. But how do we make this person to, re to reach a point of accepting? Right now, if you ask a person who is, who is about to bury their baby, that they have to accept this baby is gone. You are dreaming. What are you saying? If you ha you tell them with your own mouth, accept you are, you, you are, your spouse is gone. What are you trying to say? I just accept like that. It's not easy. Please. That is why we start with the first stage. When, when these things happen, we have to allow the people to walk the stages. And the first stage is of denial and anger. We have to allow everybody who has been affected by the death to first pass through that stage of denial and anger. Let me tell you, you can't easily accept. You've seen people tell the doctors, are you sure? Are you telling me the truth? What are you saying? I left this person and she asked me for food. What are you telling me? I've just rushed out to pick some, some milk for them. You're telling me they are gone? No, it can't be. You have seen that. We've experienced it. We've touched them and shaking. You know, we've seen people touch their loved ones and shaking them, trying to wake them up. That is, means they are denying. It can just be at your thought, oh, we have, we have lost him. And you say, yes, thank you. Never. It can never be like that. It's not easy. We are human beings. We first refuse. We refuse with all the energy we have. And that is why grief consumes energy from us. Somebody, somebody does not want to imagine. That news makes you numb. Makes you not know yourself and you completely lose your sense. You don't know yourself anymore. If it is your wife who has, who has just fallen, you don't know yourself without a wife anymore. You can't even imagine. It's, it's a state of denial and it's a normal state in grieving. You have to reach that. You have to start with that. If it is your mother... Hey, you can't imagine yourself not going home and finding your mommy or your daddy. Whoever, even if it's a friend, you will not call them and tell them, let's meet at this joint and have a cold drink or a, 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 a nyamachoma a grilled barbecue. It's difficult to accept those news. There is, that's why they are called sad news. So we have to deny, and we after denial, when, when you deny, you start now feeling angry. You start feeling like, ah, 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 ah. Why have you accepted to go? You become angry with the person who has gone. Why have you accepted to leave us? That's a no more, no more anger. Because, of course, you've lost yourself. Your mind cannot think any tomorrow. You can only see this situation. And the current situation you're seeing is a sound one. So you need answers from the body of that person. Because you think like this person has made the wrong choice for you. Why have you accepted? You should have fought on. I thought you were fighting. Look at this. Then you start also getting angry with yourself. Oh my God, I wish I did. I wish I changed the hospital. I wish I, I, I did this. I wish I did this. No, that's no more anger. But believe you me, those who are near such a person, you should assure them they did their best. You should assure them that it is beyond us. It is beyond the doctors. It is beyond us. 
it is building any human being, it is in the hands of our maker. Remember, the person can even be angry with God. If God loves me this much, why is he allowing me to face this? Why has he made my baby to go? Why has he made my friend to go? Why has he robbed me of the only person who was a breadwinner of my family? Those anchors are no more anchors. Those who are near such a person, assure them that he understands because there's nothing which gets God by surprise. I'm speaking of God because as we are in Christ, we should never ever try to, 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 to help people out of God. We shall lose them. We should always bring them back the, because the more we, know, we, we hammer God, the more we hammer God and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the more it becomes real for God, real for the person to see God, real for us to feel God, real that God is real. So we should talk about God. Even if they are saying there is no God, how can God allow me to pass through this? He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. So in between is clear for him. He knew it. Let the person continue telling them he knew it. And because he knew it, he has a solution for you tomorrow. He knows for how your tomorrow will be. It may not make sense that time to the person. But later on, when the unfolding of life comes, then you st they start saying, surely, yes, you people, you knew God had this in store for me. That is how it is. In the stage of denial and anger, a person cries a lot, bursting out in cry, weeping and wailing, and even shouting, it's very normal. Let us allow them. When you see a you know, I, I have seen people in a... Um, uh, in a funerals, telling a person to stop crying. Uh -uh. You are not allowing those people to, to grieve. If a person breaks down, don't go hold them and tell them, no, 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 wiping the tears. Yes, wipe, but let them, let those tears flow. As they flow, the anchor and the bitterness is flowing out. It is very healthy to cry. Men knock down because, they, you know, the African man doesn't cry. Of course, they are taught like that and they are brought up by their daddies like that. African man doesn't cry. My dear, when you hold it, you are feeling the bitterness in your heart. You are feeling, mm, and you are holding it to, respect, to be respected by people. You are destroying yourself. If the tear has to flow, forget about being an African man, forget about being a strong man, grieve, cry, burst out, cry. Even if you go to your bedroom, weep, cry, cry. And finally, if you're in your senses, call God, call on the Lord, shout to God. Even if you don't tell him anything, just tell him, God, I need you, I need you, I need you, oh God, I need you, I need you. He is there. This is psychological. It is, it is a mental death. It's our mind such that we don't know ourselves. We, we lose the sense of who we are. Therefore, we need to, to, we need to do anything. We can as long as we are in the path of healing. And we don't know whether we are in the path of healing unless somebody walks with us. So those who are near, people who have lost their loved ones, please, hmm, my dear, help them. Pray for them. Pray with them. As they ask so many questions because they have refused to believe. That the person is really dead. And they start saying, uh-uh. He might come. Mm -mm. He's not going to come. Yes, he's not going to come. But what do we do? We have to tell them he's with the Lord. He's with God. We shall see him one day in that morning. We have to encourage them. 
And this stage of, of um, denial and anger may last even for a month and something. Yeah, even two months, even three months. One can still be there crying and weeping and asking why did it have to happen. But one thing is, we should not allow them to... to uh, normally, we should always look at uh, how to talk to them so that it doesn't also talk uh, stay too long because the more the mind is still in denial the, the longer it will take for them to heal so it is a journey healing is a, is a journey and it, you can never heal 100% once once death strikes it because Healing 100% means that person coming back to life. He will never come back to life, so you can never heal 100%. But at least, you can heal in a way that life can be manageable. We should grieve. We should feel that anchor and try to remove it on anything the way we feel like, as long as it's not damaging yourself. Those who are near such people, make sure that they don't damage themselves. Make sure that they don't dam damage, they, they, they don't jeopardize their future. We have the second stage. After the person has, has denied all this and felt anchor, they go to a stage of hopelessness. That's the second stage. You're feeling so much sad and hopeless. And this stage can take 6 to 15 months. It can take long that you are hopeless. You don't know whether you can live. You have seen people, after losing their loved ones, becoming like they don't want to eat, they don't want to wash, they don't want to wear good clothes, they don't want to go anywhere. You tell them, I, I, I want to treat you. Uh, maybe I want to take you out for a drink. And they don't want, they lose taste in life. That is hopelessness. The stage of hopelessness is the most dangerous stage in grieving. Because this is where somebody becomes mentally sick. If not well taken care of, somebody can get mentally sick because you can fall into depression. And once a person falls into depression, then they are mentally sick. And therefore they will not, they will not be able to come to the next stage of healing. No. In such a case where the person has fallen into depression, I advise for professional consultation of the person so that they can be helped professionally. Because we can easily lose them. We have seen people who kill themselves after they have lost a loved one, committing suicide even then. It's not because, uh, it's not because they know what they are doing. It's because they have lost it in the mind. They were not able to grieve and deny and, and become hopeless and then get to the next stage. They remained at hopelessness stage. And the life rotates at, I do not know what next. The life remains there, stagnated at being sad with what has happened, feeling hated by life, feeling bitter with life, and hating everything to do with life. And thinking, why am I in this world after all if this was to happen to me? It's a dangerous stage, but it's a stage as well which we can, it can come out, which has to be walked because it's a stage you can't skip. Once somebody has experienced the loss, hopelessness is there. And especially if all your hope, you know, let me not say all, but because all our hope is in God, but there is a stage of dependency. If you depended very much on that person, for sure you feel hopeless. Now what will I do? Where will I turn to? But with God, those who are near, you can help this person see, see that it was not their fault that this thing happened, that it, you can continue to still, you need to assure them, you will still continue. You, you know, 
especially if the person had was not having capital or money or anything or property to help them move on and they have bills and all this help them know that this is not the end the bills and everything else we shall still continue to clear slowly by slowly you don't have to hate life let them be assured and if you if you if you you can help such a person stand on the on their feet again that would be very well especially when it comes to finances when it comes to if it's a person with the children maybe the the, the, the breadwinner is gone and the school fees is here the food is not there she does not know or he does not know what to do if you have you can come as friends and family and know that this person has been left with this burden. Can we help where we can to ease the pain as God is helping too? Because when you are assured that whatever you are thinking about, somebody else is thinking about that thing for you, you ease. You feel better. So it's very important that we help these people to know that you can make it. And it is at this stage of hopelessness that hope can also be built. And when you build hope in the person, then they are able now to accept. When you see that you have built the hope in person, then you will also realize that they have accepted you can tell you can tell by the way they are talking by the way they are behaving by the way they are working by the way they are walking by the way they are dealing with issues by the way they are talking without relieving the pain when you find the person relieving the pain they are still in that stage but when you see them coming out and accepting then this person is ready for new beginning and let me tell you something. The new beginning is the final stage of, of uh, grieving. In this stage, the person now has to accept the new them without the person who is gone. They have to accept the new them without the person who is gone. This is now where, this is stage of new beginning. Please, my dear friends, this is where the three A's apply. Other times, you could not apply them. No. Telling a person who is crying and grieving that you have to accept is not working. Telling a person who feels hopeless that you have to accept is not working. But when the person is healing now and feels, okay, this is me, I and so and so will never come back. Our life is minus this. That is the, past, the time now you tell the person, yes, thank you. You have accepted. Let us now adjust how you are going to live without the person. And then adopt the new self without the person. And then life can advance from there. You can move on from there. So this one is the best stage if we can ever achieve in grief if we are able to help the person to achieve this stage of the new beginning the new self minus the lost it is a very healthy stage but this means that because loss changes people this means that this person is a new them different from the person who was them when the loss didn't occur. It's a new them. Loss changes people. So if it is a person who has lost a beloved spouse, the new person they are just is the new them who has passed through loss of spouse, come out strong and can help others who lose spouses. If it is a loss of a child, this is the new me who has lost my baby, I have accepted, I can now help others who lose babies and I can think of getting another baby. Life has changed. 
It is at this stage when a person thinks of even moving. I can now move to this environment which is reminding me of this person. I know that I hate the person, but because I want to live a new life now without them. It is at this stage when a person who feels like if it's a spouse who has, uh, who has lost, thinks of another marriage. I can now get another spouse. And this is personal. It, it's optional anyway. We are, I'm just giving examples. I'm not dictating. It is at this stage when you feel that, okay, my dad has passed on, yes, I'm left with my mama. It is at this stage you say, it is now making the best of mom and me time. It is the very best time to tell the person these things which belong to your person, maybe your father, your child or that, it's time to donate them. We don't need them. Because they will never come back to wear them. But the very first time if you start taking them, you will be an enemy to the person grieving. Don't wait for them until they heal and they comfortably give out what they think is not necessary for them to maintain or keep in the home as long as the person has gone. It is at this stage when people, the person now stands us and say, Why it not that God was on my side? Things could have been worse. When you hear a person announce that from deep of their heart, this person have reached a new beginning stage. They have grieved well. We are not losing them too. It is at this stage when a person calls friends and tell them, can you come? I want we have dinner together. When you find your friend calling you who was grieving and they want to have fun with you, no, they have now grieved enough, moved from hopelessness to hope. It is very important. So when we reach that, we feel that the person has healed. But there's something I want to tell you. That healing 100% will never be there. This is life we have to accept. Because we are minors. It's an empty place. But God lifts the burden. God lifts the pain. God lifts it up. Because he knows Jesus Christ himself tasted death as man. So he knows the pain of death. He lifts it up for us. He lifts it. And our hearts are able to, to feel like accepting. Not that we hate the person who went. No, but we have accepted. We have accepted to celebrate the years that were with us. And now we move without them. We tell them now, rest in peace. But let me tell you something. Even at this stage of new beginning, it is very normal to go back. It is normal. It, that's why I'm saying you cannot heal 100%. Sometimes you will relief and start talking about that person and start dreaming with that person and start seeing that person. Where I come in Africa, from Africa, when a person dreams with the person who went long time ago, we start uh, spiritualizing this. Oh, he's about to get come for you now. Or she's about to come for you. Oh, these are evil spirits. No, please. I'm talking to people who understand where we come from and the things which, which we are taught wrong. It is very normal. To remember a person who went. Even when you have moved on 10 years down. It is very normal to remember them. They are part of your living dead. You are living but they are dead. Because they lived together in this world with you. And you had a life together. So when they go it's very normal. For you to remember them. And sometimes what we think of so much in the day comes out from our subconscious minds when we are sleeping. It's not evil. It's dream. 
So let us be very, very okay with that. It is normal to relieve them. It is normal to talk about them. It's normal. Right now, uh, you can visit your, your one of your friends who have lost a beloved one, and it is 10 years, and they start narrating the work they worked with them without pain. The good thing with the person who has already healed and is able to narrate the story, they narrate the story from a point of appreciation, not a point of mourning. When they are uh, narrating the story of how they walked their life, if the person was sick of how they went through treatment and lost the person, they are not crying anymore. They are not uh, grieving anymore. They are telling as a way of educating others, as a way of bringing awareness, not and as a way of just sharing, not as a way of wishing they did anything better. So that is how we help them. That is how we, we, we live with them, knowing that once, once when you find somebody leaving them, don't, don't tell them, uh -uh, let them rest. Uh -uh. Let the person leave the person. Let them talk about it. It's part of therapy as we continue in this life because life will never be 100% normal for them. Listen to them and appreciate the input. I hope we continue to help those who are grieving, but mostly, please, allow them to grieve. Allow them to feel hopeless, but make sure that you're near them so that it doesn't take too long. Because if it takes too long, depression will click, uh, will, will knock in, and it will not be okay. But must also remember we are mourning as those who are in Christ. We are not going to cry because of death forever. No. Soon and very soon. <laughs> soon and very soon. Ah, please. Soon and very soon we are going into eternity. For this flesh cannot inherit eternity. Remember when we say we want to see God face to face, we have to undo this rotten body. Let it go to rot and we see Christ. But as long as we are in this world and our day has not come to, to take off this body, to go to our maker, then we have to accept those who have gone ahead of us to go. And we continue to live their lives without bitterness. We continue, those who are being struck today, like my, my, my sister, whom, whom we are mourning her husband this week, my dear, it shall be well. And it shall be well because God is in it. God is in your life. When God is in your life, mm, all things become parallel. That none can knock the other. None can knock the other. Today, we must cry because we are humans. Tomorrow, we must feel hopeless. But next year, we shall say, thank you, God, that you are. It's not that you are on our side. Things could not. We could have sunk. Our boat could have gone deeper. I want to leave you with that, my friends and family. Please, let's help those who are near us to grieve, to mourn, and to walk with them even the journey of new beginning. Once we see them healed, it's not the time to leave them. It's the time to embrace the new them and help them live better. Thank you so much. I love you. Continue please to subscribe. Continue to watch my videos. Continue to help me laugh when it is time to laugh. Continue to comment. Continue to tell me what we are doing good and what we are doing wrong. That will be good. Those who are new, subscribe or become part of this family. Become part of my family. You know? Social media makes us build a family of people we do not know, but people who can stand there for you. It's very important. I thank you. I bless you. And I give God uh, glory for you for being part of this family. Bye-bye to the next one. Bye.